You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, what is up? There are 26,000 of you guys on the line with us this afternoon or morning for some. Um, I just want to tell you guys or ask you, what is your dream? There has never been a better time to follow your dreams. Incredible tools that help you to express your dream and to connect with others who share it and appreciate it. The world is looking for vision and direction. We figured out how to do things. We're looking for people to tell us why. The time is ripe for dreamers to dream big dreams, captivating and compelling dreams. And you know, everyone has a dream. We all have dreams as children. The trouble is they often get buried. We become disenchanted with our dreams because they don't magically appear. Realize that just having the dream isn't enough. You need to have discipline and and, uh, a commitment to follow that dream. And remember, if you're not following your own dream, you're following someone else's. That is my word and where it's born. Take it from me, Dini Mussolini. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, it feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos and starseeds, and two times for my people who are vegans. We are averaging over 34,000 plus listeners if we've been at this for three solid years. I appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey, and we're still growing, baby. It is all because of you, most definitely. We are the people who have dedicated their lives to music, spirituality, business, literature, art, movies, and research in every aspect. And we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story. Man, we've had celebrities on the show from Grammy Award winning artists, nominees to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors and aliens. Or people think they're aliens. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out to book an interview or just to share a real cool story. Email me at the radio at only one media group dot com. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do, and together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. And with that, hello out there, and welcome to another episode of our podcast, Vigilantes Radio. Thank you again, as always, for tuning in and being a part of our audience family. You know the number to dial. It's 701-801-9813 to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in and mix directly from my website, which is only one onemediagroup.com. Scroll over to the Vigilantes Radio tab and slap that Go Live button and you'll be right here live in the mix with all of us or in the chat room so feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here and as always all episodes are available for free download you can grab that from spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube the app called podcast addict or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we've ever aired well I don't want to keep 26,000 of you guys waiting any longer, so let's go ahead and dive deep into this interview, shall we? But, but before we do that, let's do this. 
Are you living with pain? I was, after a nasty fall. I got relief with one-hour pain relief. I'm Barry Yarconi, president, and here's Lisa, a Marine who was injured in Iraq. After surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers for lingering head, shoulder, back, and knee pain. But I hated the dangers and side effects. My friend told me about one-hour pain relief, and now I'm off the drugs. One-hour pain relief is the result of 15 years of research on an amazing extract from hops, the plant used to flavor beer. Whether your pain is from an injury or just aging, you get safe all-day relief in less than one hour. We're so sure you'll love one-hour pain relief, too, that we'll send you a one-week trial for just a small shipping charge. Call 800-269-9500 right now. That's 800-269-9500. There's no gimmicks, no obligation, no automatic shipments. Stop living with pain. Call 800-269-9500 for your one-week trial or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-269-9500. Today's interview is the D1 interview, and I'm your host, Dini Mussolini. So this might just be the most personally revealing interview we've ever had through Vigilantes Radio. Going about our interviews and doing the research, we feel is very essential and has certainly yielded some very emotional and captivating interviews in our past work. But this one stands out to me for several reasons. Well, the main reason is D1 is absolutely incredible and insightful, uh, but I didn't uh, anticipate that we would share so much in, in terms as our views on things. Like this matrix style world we have built upon planet earth while many of us can the world and the negative aspect of this valley of malls society we have the advantage of truly seeing the matrix is knowing that it is there and allows you to also see right through it d1 is a perfect example of an act that can see through that and into the next level the one beyond the matrix we'll have an amazing time talking to d1 and i can assure you the conversation won't stop here at this interview So listen on to the end and you'll see what I mean. But for now, we'll start at the true beginning. I'm leaving this interview as wide open as possible to help you see through the matrix a little bit more and understand what we do and what we love about music. And how much we love it at Vigilantes Radio is 100% authentic and real. So it may be too early for this, but grab a cold one (laughs) or your tea and have a listen. And with that... Let's welcome D1 to our show. Uh, D1, you're now live in the mix with all of us. How are you feeling and how is it going? We're doing good. How are you? Doing great, doing great. So uh, how's the weather where you at, man? Uh, well, in Chicago, it's kind of it's kind of frosty right now. But um, other than the weather, the weather don't get me down. I'm pretty good right now. Great, 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 man. So, man, right off the bat, man, I mean, not like bat, Batman, but right off the bat, my good sir. How important uh-huh. is the music you make to you personally? Well, each song um, I put into, I put time into, is going to relay um, a certain subliminal kind of hidden message in the song. Um, the songs I put out, um, I spend hours in a basement trying to. Um, composite everything into this one message that's about my life but also a message that the not only my fans can relate to but the world in general can relate to because we all go through problems in everyday life so making a song about me my problems related to the world's problems it takes much more time than people usually think it takes time to complete a song, or album, or EP, or whatever. My music in general, for me, since I love my music so much, mm-hmm. you know, I have to make sure everything is like, like, spot on. Like, my production has to be like, I had to absolutely love it. Mixing Master to the T. Um, the song, the lyrics that I write, they have to be meaningful and impactful in any way. Like, just any way that the audience can, you know, indulge in, understand, you know, because I try to make my music as understandable as possible, but me being that person who is, like, thinks on a whole different mindset, a person who thinks differently than everyone, I say my message in a 
more complex way. So that's why it takes it takes me hours to complete a project, or it takes me days or weeks to finish like an album or EP or any music that I have, because that's how much I love the music. Definitely, definitely. And that's a good thing, man, that, you know, you take your time with it. You know, I guess you'd say you're a perfectionist. Well, when it comes to my music, yes, I am most absolutely a perfectionist. I try not to, I try not to waste any, I'm not trying to waste any time on my music. Uh, I try to go as nice at my own pace until I feel like it's ready to be put out. So, yeah. Definitely. So, what what other musical aspirations do you have? What other musical aspirations do I have? Um, let's see. The, like, as in... Like, um, do you see yourself, like, um, maybe doing music for a film or maybe a, a TV sitcom? Or perhaps... Oh. Perhaps oh, yeah. There's a, um, yeah, perhaps there's somebody you want to collab with, like, you know, like Taylor Swift in the future. You know, she's a... You know, man, like, I, the number one aspiration, and I know this, this kind of, this sounds small, but for me, it's a big deal. I think the number one aspiration for me, as far as music goes, I always wanted to collab with Kendrick Lamar. Dope, dope. Because Kendrick Lamar is, like... The person I look up to as far as music because um, going way back before Section 80, before before Section 80, uh, I heard Kendrick Lamar throughout his journey and the message he had dived into when he came into the culture of hip hop. Um, not only did I fall in love with his flow. But I also fell in love the way he took a more, I guess you could say, yeah, more of a subliminal approach into, you know, spreading his message. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he paints a vivid, he paints a vivid imagery of, you know, the times that he's dealt with in his past struggles. And I kind of feel I really relate to some of the stuff he's been saying throughout his whole entire career and you know it just makes you want to work you know this this uh working in the studio with Kendrick it makes me see you know the actual process of him putting together his music and I always wanted to work with him you know acting um something I was going to do uh you know I already produced like uh, my goal is always to transcend music you know Mm-hmm. Music is the pedestal for everything else to fall in place. Definitely, bro. Are there any uh, other goals for you for the long term? Yes. Um, my long, my long term goals. Um, hopefully, I will continue down my path of being a hip hop artist was leading me to be, because I always wanted to be an actor, so I wanted to uh, transition out of hip hop and become an actor, and not also just an actor, but to like, you know, have my own TV show and be a radio personality as well. Definitely. And also, um, I want to like to be a comedian, you know, because I want people, there's like many ways I can share my story through music, of course, but also can share it through stand up comedy, you know, and I also want to start my own clothing business as well. So definitely have like a lot of long term goals that that I most definitely will accomplish. Definitely man. Go for it. Go for it, bro. Thanks, man. Yes sir. Alright man, let's get into the re the real reason why we are all here year so you just released like three singles this year yes um, i did what makes these songs cohesive and sound like they belong together or is that not the case here and each song has a life of its own he, uh yes um i put these three songs the reason why i put three song singles out is because it's kind of like a you know how a tv show has a series 
And we have that Netflix original series that's like a, sh- a small mini series. Yep. It's, kind of, it's kind of like I did with these three singles. It's not. I, I didn't make it to an EP, a small one. I just made it to three singles. But each song is like a part one, part two, and part three. You know? Dope. I would say part one would be uh, the song that you heard. I don't know what song you heard, but the song called Showcase. Mm-hmm. So actually, uh, yeah, showcase was the first one you heard. It's kind of like part one. It's basically showcase is about me, you know, basically being aggressive, coming at the people who, you know, I told my dream to all my friends and everybody said, um, you know, Daniel, you're talking about. You're talking nonsense, you're talking crazy, you know, and I've been discredited, I've been, you know, thrown under the bus, I've been talked about for like many, 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 many months, and so this song was like part one, it's just to throw, it's just like being aggressive towards people who had do the same aggression, but like 10 times harder at me, and I was just show with them and that was part one part two was about me uh, also going through a time in my life where I was kind of at ends with uh, the people who I love in my life um, mm-hmm. it's about you know people it's like about moment in time like we all have moments in times where you know, we lose our cool, we lose our temper, you know, we let our uh, emotions cloud, you know, what's really going on, because I'm an altruistic, I'm an altruistic person, and so, snaps, like, part two, where I kind of just, you know, everything was becoming too much, like, it's bad enough, I got, you know, people over here saying this stuff about what I'm doing, but now I have the people who I love saying the same thing. It kind of built up to a point where I was about to lose my cool. I was about to go out of, I was about to lose my temper and just go out of control. Hence the name, Snap. Um, I basically took a situation that I was going through at that moment in time and just kind of made the song about it and part three which is the last part cold which I think is like my favorite one because when I made cold I knew I wanted to be the song about coming to grips with um you know who you are as a person uh all the pet code that's what basically code is about because you know people in life go through times of times in their life where they don't know what to do they get cold feet mm-hmm. right and they they turn cold feet into now you're completely frozen like you're absolutely caught up in the middle of everything like you're stuck in time and basically code is about me coming to grips with everything that's going on and me making a mental and physical decision is say, hey, everything that's going around me is holding me back. Like, it's keeping me in prison. How about I just warm up and break free from all of the madness around me because at the end of the day, I control what happens within my own life. I control right. whether I see or feel, you know, I control whether I, you know, live or die. And so it's about me becoming free, um, basically. It's about me being secure instead of insecure, about me being happy instead of worrying and having fear and doubt and anger and all negativity basically gone away, you know, and... 
that's where the three part story sequence ends. Echo. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, so what was it though that eventually made you feel the need to explore music on your own? Um. Well, maybe you want to explore music on your own. Well, I started um, doing music. Started getting into music uh, when I was in the third, third, fourth, third, fourth grade. I started getting into music, and you know, throughout that time, throughout first grade, all through, you know, ninth, I was suffered. You know, severe depression. Um, I was not like the other kids. Um, I was kind of secluded. But um, being um, this depression made me want to have something that I can call my own. Something that no one would take from me. Here's why I started doing music started writing at first and then it kind of escalated into me making music his on a doll and then it started making it started making it into rap and it started it's, it's, it's kind of a way for me music is it's kind of a way for me to express myself to my fullest extent during that time because I was too scared, too afraid to express who I really was during that period of time. And music was a way for me to express myself through words, who I was, Definitely. What, I, yeah. what I was going through. Basically, everything that was going on in my life, it was a way for me to express it because I was too afraid to express it. Yeah. Man, you sound just like me, man, and growing up. Uh, well, we are, somebody out there is probably going to have the same story as me, but that person is going to be different than me because we all, we all here, we all go through same situations, but we all are different people because if we're all the same people, then... I think everybody on this world will probably go the same with one another. Definitely. So, why did you choose to be a solo artist versus, you know, uh, starting a group or joining in a group? Um, do you feel like, as a solo artist, you're allowed to express yourself fully? Well, you know what? It kind of. You know, I wanted. Did I want to be in a group? Well, I never really considered being in a group because, you know, back then, people didn't really like me, so uh, it was kind of impossible for me to be in a group. So I was just thinking of going solo. And the more and more I got into my... When I started my career, I was like, you know, I was happy to open up to have other artists, you know, come with me and do this rap career. But people... People didn't want to do it. People, people were afraid. Um, people didn't want. To, yeah, people didn't want to work, or some people didn't have the time, which I can understand. So I was, I just like, you know what? Since I'm the only one who could do what I do, I'm just gonna go and go for it on solo. And then I think it's working best for me because I get 100% creative control over the things I put out. So right, it's good for me. Um, so who played a key role along the way in making all this, you know, seem possible and reachable? Like who told you to really pursue these dreams? And most importantly, what is it about these people that made you truly believe in what they had to say or their perspective of your work? Well, I want to. I would say future millionaires and future millionaires inspired me um 
while my time at college, I had ran into a group of people. Um, they showed me information that, you know, growing up, uh, growing up, I moved around everywhere, but Chicago was my main home. You know, I grew up in poverty. Everybody around me was negative. Everybody had like a a, a small minded perspective on life. And, you know, some people got used to it. And when I ran into these people, and when they told me the information they told me about life, you know, and pursuing your passion, it, I, it had me wondering, um, have I been pursuing my passion this whole time? Have I really been, you know, truly enjoying the, the process? And I was like, no. And it, these people kind of opened the gateway of what to is now me, you know, going full at it with my music because, you know, once they told me that, hey, um, you're not happy what you're doing, then do something else. And this is exactly what I did. I, um, done some did some research I have a bunch of mentors tell me the exact same thing that my group of friends tell me, told me and these were people who were making more money than doctors and lawyers and they told me what these my group of friends been telling me for like months now and I was like you know what if that person to turn one item into a profitable business. Imagine what I can do if I just go 100% at my music career. And so that's what exactly what I did. I told myself I'm going full speed ahead, I'm going 100% because if I don't go 100% now, I won't go 100% later. That's the that's the all in fact for me. And so. But these group of people, uh, my friends, they kind of broke, I kind of broke free after, you know, days of thinking, going through, through, through my head, you know, talking to God, you know, listening, just being a servant, you know, thinking everything through. Like, it was so much to think through. You know, I realized that I was making a big decision. I was making a big decision, but also know it was be the right decision for me. So it made me go full out on my music, like no bars back. Mhm. Mm so, um, well, as you mentioned earlier, that you, you do the producing, um, but are you also involved in the mastering and uh, you know the marketing of your music? Well, the marketing, I am absolute, that is my control. I control the marketing of my music. Um, but the mastering, I did not get down mastering yet. Um, the songs that you that I do have out, it was mastered by someone else. One of my friends in college mastered, that, mastered new songs. And I have not, you know... I have not learned the ability to master yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your preferred software to use when you're recording? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. Because I use different dolls. Um, but the software I prefer to use, um, after trying out all of them, I will say the easiest to use is Ableton, because it's easy to use, but my best one, the one I prefer to use is FL Studio, mm -hmm. the production pack, just because it, for me, in my opinion, is more versatile. 
than all the other production software. And I, for me, FL Studio allows me to, I think, in a way, have more fun with it. Like, it allows me to be versatile. It allows me to be more creative. You know, how it makes different sounds. Um, you know, it has a whole lot of functions for me to play with. To, like, to see what sounds cool. Like, the plugins, the generators, you know. And for me, it's just, like, more entertaining to use FL Studio than the rest of the other dog soft product software production software you also use that to do your vocals oh I use I use um what is it um Pro Tools to do I use Pro Tools for the vocals actually okay okay nice nice alright um who were like besides Kendrick Lamar who were the first and heaviest influences on your music and performance style man I like it had to be all honest um Michael Michael Jackson was one um of course I gotta give props to Tupac Tupac was a, a good one people keep on People keep saying that I look like Tupac. I don't know why. I don't. I don't think it's true. But I just roll with it. Tupac was a big one for me. Number three, I'll have to. Besides Kendrick Lamar, I would. I would have to say. I don't want to say Biggie, but I want to say M. And M is. His, not only his music called me, but his story called me. The story before the music is yeah. that's what makes it one of my top five. Um, of course, I got to give big props to Kanye. And then the fifth one. Oh, huh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hard one. I had to choose. Um... Hmm. Um, for the fifth one, I would choose. Um, I, I gotta give it. I gotta give it to uh, Chris Brown. Definitely. And you know why I chose? You know that's probably gonna have to be a debate about this. Why I choose Nas or Hov or Biggie? I had to look at these top five at a personal standpoint and what they had did to my life because the hip-hop culture changed my life, in period. But these top five artists, I grew up on, you know? Yeah. I grew up on listening to these artists, and they had impact my way of music throughout my entire life. And so this is why I choose the top five. My top five artists. Definitely. All right, man. Um, like, after you've put together your song, you've recorded it, you put a mix on it mm -hmm. the best way you can, and then you send it to uh, someone to get it mastered, and they send the final version back to you. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel on the inside, man? Come on, describe those magic moments for us. Man, I'm telling, man, I'm telling you, it, I didn't like it at all. I, to be honest with you, I didn't like it. Um, I already spent so much money on making this happen. Like, in all honesty, I wanted to start with an album. I had ten songs made already. I had ten songs made already. I was like, why not? But then, I didn't get a chance to hear the master. I didn't get a chance to be in there with the mastering. So I'm like, ah, oh, it sucks. I hated it when it happened. And when I got the songs back, and I listened to all of them, and I was like, oh my God. I didn't like them. I didn't like them. So, 
I'm, I'm, yeah, someone like, like originally it was supposed to be an EP of like ten more songs, but I had to cut like seventy five percent of it off because I promise you, I if I don't like it, I know the audience will not like it. So I had to, I had to scratch some off. I had to scratch a majority off. Which wow. only left me with three singles. I don't know why I I like these three singles more than all all the other songs that I had you know been mastered. But these were the only three songs where I was like I actually liked how this these three songs turned out, and I, was, I had to indulge myself. And I was like, you know what, this would be a perfect storyline these three songs right here that's what happened like seven eight songs got cut off because I didn't like how they came out and these three songs with the last one standing so I mean I'll definitely learn my lesson next time I'm going to be in there for the mastering part it's going to come out some extra it's going to come my pocket a little bit more but hey I prefer quality music any day so what's going to happen to the other uh, seven or eight tracks that got cut? Man, the other seven, eight tracks are still in my laptop. There's actually there's actually a fourth song that I have out on SoundCloud. But the reason why I um, promoted as much as I did the three singles I have is because that song is kind of I want to keep that song for my personal my personal uh, listening to like anybody else can listen to it everybody can just go on my SoundCloud and listen to the song but that fourth song is about um, you know the woman it was like two women it's about two women in my life who I feel me right and wrong at the same time and so that song was like for like personal that I couldn't you know promote so the rest of the songs are still my laptop uh trust me they're they're still hit two of them are still hit I plan on using them I just gotta start from square one and get it all done the right way Definitely. All right, man. Um, like, what is it about the way you have approached making your music that separates it from the rest of the artists out there in the mainstream or even in the underground and indie circuits? Man, well, I look at some. Of, I have looked at some of these uh, these other artists, underground uh, artists, indies. You know, uh, going into this making, going into this making music, I wanted, I wanted to make music that you know not only that I will like, but my my people, my potential fans, they will like as well. And so, I had to think about it. I had to, before I had went into making music, I had to think. What would I like? Because, you know, I can listen to trap music, you know, hip, you know, that needy goody music, other people's styles of music all day. But at the end of the day, if I'm not good, if I'm not good at making it or I don't feel as comfortable as making it, like I won't make it, I had to create my own form of what music that I like. I think that's why I, I think that's what differentiates me from the rest of the artists because I think you know some of these uh, you know artists some of them people are copy copy other people's style of production um, and that not just saying that just because everybody else is saying that it's because what I have experienced you know with the artists that I've had interacted with, you know, throughout my community. 
and they all sound the, the production style and the way they go about delivering the message is all the same, you know. And for me, I I have made my model and one of my models in music is not to, just to make music for the streets, but to make music for the world. And so, using that model, I decided, hey, I was not going to just make music, you know, just for someone to, you know, pop up in a club to, you know, that underground, you know, twerk party music, you know what I'm saying? You the which I can, I had no problem making it. But, you know, it just wouldn't be music. If I would have did that, it wouldn't just be music for everyone. It would be music for a certain group of people. Right. I got you. So is that important to you to be different? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, I've always been different. Like, me being different has basically become a norm, basically become the new normal for me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, fault anyone for, you know, calling me out my name or anything else like that. I'm like, I'm always, I'm always going to be different. Like, I'm always going to be, have this weird personality that no one else seen before, and that's fine. That kind of like me being this weird, different person, kind of like you know, involves its way into the music as well. As to when like you know, I let some people hear it, and people was like, you know, Daniel, what is this? You know. You know, this one track is kind of hard, you know what I'm saying? This shoes is not for the streets. Well, I ain't exactly making music for you or your specific group of people. I just made the music for everyone, you know? Mm -hmm. I made the music so that everyone can enjoy it, you know? And, you know, I get really, you know, I get ridiculed for being, you know, the special unique one, you know, the one who's always being different, the one who's always got the weird personality, you know, I don't blame him for that, but at the end of the day, I think being different is, is an advantage, because not everybody's like you, nobody's like you, actually, nobody's like me, right. nobody's like me, like, I'm, I'm one of a kind, I'm a unique person, and no one can ever copy who I am, and that's just, that's fact. Definitely. All right, man, once again, we appreciate you for coming on to our show here at Vigilantes Radio. Thanks, man. We are in, yeah, man, we are in the second to the last moment of our interview with D1, and here's where we allow our guests to give info to the website. So what do you want people to connect with you on uh, social media? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to follow me, yeah, if you want to know what's going on, you can follow me on Instagram at D-M-W-A-L-L-3. -L you can follow me on Twitter at D-M-W-A-L-L-3. -L you know, you can, you know, follow, tweet, retweet, whatever. You can also follow me on SoundCloud. Um, the link, I, I, don't, I think, I don't know if you have it or not, but if you don't. I do. Oh, you have it? Well, then you can follow me on SoundCloud. But the way to connect with me is through Instagram and Twitter. They the same username. I try not to make it hard for people to reach out. So it's the same username for Instagram and Twitter. D L W A L L three. Definitely. All right, guys. All our listeners, just in case you didn't catch those links, I have them all in the description of the show. So all you have to do is click the link. I did all the work for you. Well, my fingers did. So thank me later. Nah, thank me now. All right. 
<laughs> After the music break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the hot seat, and our fans love this part of the segment. And of course, along with the actual interview, but the audience get a chance to hear either some good old singing, maybe D1 makes uh, maybe want to share a poem or inspirational speech, speech with us, spoken word. Uh, maybe a freestyle rap, maybe tell us a joke or two, or share a real cool story, or even whip out a live instrument. The choice is his to make from our special guests. Well, you never know what these creative minds and vessels were produced in a spotlight. And this afternoon, we'll find out if D1 has what it takes to be put on the spot, a test of his true artistry, and maybe even some hidden talent. But for right now, we have D1 with this song called Snap, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I spin this planet on this orbit, shoot the ledges like a faucet, sip this water, just got poison. I don't think you even notice. This is self-explanatory. Your sandwich only temporary. You can meet with a knife. I go guns blazing, no taser, no chaser. Take the L to the head. I don't care if the fear is coming. I'ma let the body drop, body count one. Clean up all the evidence. You is not imperative. Eric gets ignorant with I two two first with one stone. Everything I I say I own it, you are just some weak opponents Round one, you can get the knockout, then go blackout Hey, this the revolution televised I'm breaking up the enterprise You're facing your western mass I'll see you on the other side huh. I don't know what's happening inside me Something's burning inside me It feels amazing You should be worried I'm about to snap Snap, snap, I don't know what's happening inside me. Snap, hey, snap, I don't know what's happening inside me. Snap, snap, how could you this on me? I'm a snap, hey, snap, snap, why do I bother trying it? Snap, whoa, what? Yeah. Listen to me very closely. You left me out in the cold. I was cold and freezing, stuck and sad. Looking for somewhere to go home. I was all alone. I was feeling broken. When you spoke them words to me, I was feeling devastated. My world crumbled around me. I'm stepping on broken pieces. I made a mess. He did not believe me. When I told my family about my dream, my mom shut it down, told me to get your degree. And the rest of our family agreed. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, so I called myself an Uber and left that bitch in one piece. I was feeling angry, now I'm hurt. Words like a fastball took one to the gut. I don't give a fuck what you saying Cause I'm about to snap 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 I don't know why they say this shit to me Snap Snap I guess I gotta take off All these niggas I'm about to snap 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 I don't know why they do this to me Snap 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 Something is burning inside me Snap 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 Who the fuck told you you can rule me Snap Snap My bad Snap Who the fuck who told you can rule me Snap I don't know what's happening inside me Amazing, you should be worried. I'm about to snap, snap, snap. I don't know what's happening inside me. Snap, hey, snap. I don't know what's happening inside me. Snap, snap. How could you? Do I bother trying to snap? 
Are you living with pain? I was, after a nasty fall. I got relief with one-hour pain relief. I'm Barry Yarconi, president, and here's Lisa, a Marine who was injured in Iraq. After surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers for lingering head, shoulder, back, and knee pain. But I hated the dangers and side effects. My friend told me about one-hour pain relief, and now I'm off the drugs. One-hour pain relief is the result of 15 years of research on an amazing extract from hops, the plant used to flavor beer. Whether your pain is from an injury or just aging, you get safe all-day relief in less than one hour. We're so sure you'll love one-hour pain relief, too, that we'll send you a one-week trial for just a small shipping charge. Call 800-269-9500 right now. That's 800-269-9500. There's no gimmicks, no obligation, no automatic shipments. Stop living with pain. Call 800-269-9500 for your one-week trial or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-269-9500. And we are back again. That was D1 with the song Snapped. Man, that was a banger for sure. Uh, the beat was was dope, man. And, and, and uh, the message in the song was yeah, pretty interesting. So that's a pretty cool song in my opinion. A lot of people have fear of failure. Okay. Dr. Robert Schuler often asked, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? Successful people know they cannot fail because they know that there is no such thing as failure. There are only results. The super achievers in the world are able to take action because they simply don't believe in failure. Are you afraid of failure? then you need to understand that there is no such thing as failure. You never fail. You always succeed though in producing results. If you don't like the results you are producing, you just have to find someone who is producing the results that you desire and do the same things that that person is doing. And that's something that uh, D1 uh, discussed about, you know, his, his project, how he had to cut a few songs off the record, you know, because he wasn't happy with the with the results but he kept true to his mission by putting out something because he felt like that was you know the thing to do so that you guys got to do the same thing belief in failure drags you down if you believe that you have failed then it affects your self-image and your ability to do the things you want to do remind yourself that failure is not an option everything you do has a result If the things you are doing are not producing the results you desire, then change what you are doing. It is as simple as that. Don't dwell on your failure. Think instead about what you could do differently to get the results you want. After uh, Thomas Edison had tried 9,999 times to perfect the light bulb and had not succeeded, someone asked him if if he was going to have 10,000 failures. Edison replied that he had not failed, that he had just discovered another way to not invent the electric light bulb. Realize that you cannot fail, and you'll be able to do, to be, and to have whatever it is that you want. And with that, let's bring D1 back on. D1, man, you're back live, and you're in a hot seat now. Yeah, so what do you have for us? Well, yeah. I want to prepare for this. Um, let's see. Um, well, let's see. I am a poet. At, I am a poet at first. But I can also play the guitar. So I I don't know. I think I, it's up to the... I, I, don't, I don't want just me to say I want to see what the people... The, the, I want to see what the people would like to hear. And that way I kind of give the people what they like while also doing something I like. Because I was not expecting this. And, and if they want something, I could come up with something like like right now or like a few seconds. If that's, so, on, if that's cool with you or, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's see. What, what can I do? Uh, I could um preview. I could preview one of the songs I'm gonna have on my first, on my very first debut album. 
Yeah, let's hear that. All right. Let me just pull it up. All right. Okay. For, for the record, uh, I made this. The production was made by me. So I own full rights to the song that's about to be played. All right. This is like a sneak preview. A uh, sneak preview of the first song of my uh, album. Uh, I haven't made the vocals in it yet, but if you want to, I could say I could speak a few um, speak a few bars off this first song. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, man. Let's All right. Hear it. Took your shot to miss it You not no competition Begin the mission Here's my proposition I don't mediate I meditate Then kill them as I go Face the whip less than I duck fast Then I get the final blow Yeah You was talking all that shit But now you need to know it I don't play it And I don't hide This is not a fucking playground You came at me In my family As cold as squirt to snow Face the whip less than I duck fast Then I get final blow Yeah Yeah don't want to give that part away. Oh, I can't wait for that one. That was hot, man. Thank you, man. Definitely, definitely. And there you have it, D1. Believe it or not, there are only eight questions throughout our interviews and about four or five different talking points. I'm kind of in shock myself that we can sometimes talk so much about a person's life. And thank you so much for putting up with these random observations and questions. You no, know, um, I mean, I love talking. Definitely, man. I look at life, music, and books at a very curious angle, and it's always a pleasure to find out what truly drives the process from the people that bring it all to life. So truly, D1, thank you. And of course, oh, you're welcome, no, man. Anytime. Oh, man, thank you. And there's no possible way that I could bring up or talk about everything you might have wanted to mention, uh, like the insane amount of hours you dedicate each and every week or the process of, of your online presence and the content yeah. that you create, all kind of things. You know, interviews can go anywhere at any time, so please feel free to take the old Vision Ladies Radio uh, soapbox here at the end to mention anything else at all that you would like to leave us with. Maybe some astounding words of wisdom, or at the very least, a suggestion of a brand new breakfast cereal. You get the point. The floor uh -huh. is all yours, man. You can say anything that you like. Thanks again, D. All right, man. Uh, so anything. Oh Lord. Uh. Well, I would say to all those people who are listening, um, if you're watching this or, you know, are you listening, watching on your laptop or listening on the phone, I would say that the hours that you do not have, you don't feel passionate about something, or you don't love something as much unless you're willing to sacrifice everything. Like, if you're not willing to sacrifice everything and let go of all the fear and doubt that you had in your head, don't waste your time doing something that you know in your heart that you're going to see that because this music thing, it's a great sacrifice, man. Like, I stayed, it was nice where I stayed up all the way to 9 a.m. in the morning just to get music done. It was nights nice where I could even sleep properly, turn over in my, I would turn, toss and turn in my sleep, thinking of the decisions I made. It was days where I lost my friends, man. Um... My my connection with my family has, you know, took a slight turn, took a major turn at the point, you know, I, man, I'm telling you, I was in the streets, man, like, I was sleeping on the, the train, man, the bus, the bench, you know what I'm saying, I had took so much, I had sacrificed so much, man. You know, it was so many days where I wanted to quit, 
you know, and give it all up, you know, and follow the route that America has made for everybody. But, you know, coming into this music, hip hop thing, I realized it, that if you love something, which I, I like, for example, I love music, I had to let go of the fear of failure. Because in my book, feel like what you were saying, failure is definitely not an option. Like, failure don't even exist in my head. My mindset is only set up for success. And that's how I did with my music. You know, I had came to a point where I was like, you know what? Forget everybody, forget everyone who said anything negative. All the negativity is kind of muted. And all the positive, it's just going to embrace. And so, coming in my music, I was like, no fear, no doubt, no worry. I just came in, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this music, and I'm going to make big with this music. And I guarantee you, I will. Because those who have the mindset that I, like I have, or you just have to be just like my mindset. You can have a mindset that set up, that you set yourself up to achieve more. You know? And... That goes for anything that anyone loves. Like, don't be afraid to take that bit risk. Don't be afraid to jump off the cliff, you know, to take that jump, you know, not knowing that the parachute might open right away. And, you know, that's what I did with this music. I took major risks, took very major risks. We're getting this music. I spent a lot of money. I spent hundreds, thousands of dollars on music and promoting my music and so you gotta spend money to make money that's why I say and not just money but you gotta spend time lots of it lots of time to perform your craft what is this music uh, acting dancing your aunt being um, running your product you know anything you want it takes time it takes a lot of it. It takes a lot of time. You get less hours of sleep. You get like three hours of sleep. Um, and you, you lose money. You probably lose more money. But at the end, at the, at the end of the day, all of it is gonna pay off. And I know it's gonna pay. And if it can pay off for me, I'm pretty sure it's gonna pay off for everyone. For all those who say around them, their environment, the people they hang around with, for all the people who say that you can't do the, you know, unthinkable, you know, the unreachable, you say to them that, to say, watch me, man, just, just watch me, and you'll see where you made your flaw, and that's all I have to say, you know. Definitely, bro. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, man. Yeah, we want to say uh, another thank you, man, to the incredible D1, everybody. What's up, everyone? Remember, follow me on my, follow me on my social media. I'll always have you updated with new music. Um, Spoil my uh, my life in person, you know. And D1, just follow me on my social media. Uh, follow me. Um, go check me out on SoundCloud. My music is available on Apple iTunes, Spotify, and Tidal. Don't ask me how I got on those things. It's all perfectly legal. But if you want to have my music, you go to Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify, and I think, yeah, I think that's it. Also, you can check out the, the my website, um, uh, I think I'll send a link in my social media for those who want it. So, yeah, I think that's all. All right. We are over our hour mark here. 
thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, the app called Podcast Addict, or our website, which is only one media group.com. And that goes for every single show that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or send something for us to play, email it to V Radio at only one media group.com. Here my disclaimer, we are drummer free, we do not judge, and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show. Something you got to deal with. Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. And also special thanks to our guests for joining us. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Tumblr. We are all over just connect with us and we do follow back okay well just remember to be yourself and be absolutely freaking great at just doing that peace Now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a seventh sign regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive.